Hello everyone and thank you for joining us for another of Your Vote Matters and MTV Election Awareness Weekly where we are talking to political party leaders on their policies and why you should vote their candidates in the coming election. This time it's the leader of the People's National Congress and former Prime Minister Peter O'Neill. Mr O'Neill, thank you for coming on board. How has it been? Are you looking all right? And the challenges are ahead. How has it been? Uh, thank you very much, John, and thank you to all our viewers uh, right across the country for this opportunity to speak to them. Okay. Uh, it has been a, uh, a very challenging uh, few years, but uh, I'm, 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 <laughs> but I'm fighting for it. The immediate fit. time is more challenging now. <laughs> yeah, well, we're looking forward to it. You know, when, you, uh, when elections are exciting time in PNG. Okay. So uh, we are certainly looking forward to going out and meeting our people and explaining what we stand for and what we can do for the country. You held a convention recently. Yes. Tell us about that firstly. Let's talk about that. Um, how many candidates are you fielding? How many of them are females? Well, we will have a few f number of female in, in there. We're talking to about three at the moment. Uh, we, we haven't finalized the complete list yet. We have to sign all the forms that the Electoral Commissioner wants us to sign. Okay. All the candidates need to sign as well. Uh, we need to pay their nomination fees. Once the uh, nomination process is complete, then you will know exactly how many candidates we are endorsing right throughout the country. So it'll be anywhere between 70 and 80 candidates. So uh, that, that's a sort of the numbers that we are okay. looking at. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's the uh, mm -hmm. ideal number, I suppose, the ideal number every political party is going for to, to, to get in the majority to be called upon, I suppose. Well, there are some seats in the country that are safe seats. So, you know, people have already determined that they've got a good leader and they want to keep that leader. So it's no point us going in there and disturbing uh, that kind of understanding just for the sake of politics. Yeah, uh, we yeah. have to respect those leaders yeah. and uh, try and work with them. Yes, yes. So uh, those are the, the seats that we are not filling any candidates. Uh, but the, where we see that there are uh, issues and challenges that uh, are, are there and that our people want to change and we think that we can give them a better opportunity, uh, we are filling uh, candidates uh, right across okay. the country. You want to tell us which seats you are not filling? Well, I mean, you know, you look at seats like Western Islands and, of course, uh, New Island Province, they are our elder statesmen of the country. Okay. okay. And, and, and people like that, uh, we shouldn't be just challenging for the sake of politics. Uh, we respect them. They will, of course, play their role in our society and lead our people. And, uh, and, and in time, they will retire and move on. Uh, so as a result, we are not filling any candidates in such seats right across the country. Okay. So, Peter O'Neill himself, is it Yalbu Bangia or is it Southern Highlands in governor's seat? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think there are many people who can do a better job in being a governor of Southern Highlands, so I'll leave uh, my friends and my brothers in Southern Highlands uh, to, to contest that seat. Uh, but I'm certainly going to uh, go, go for the Yalbu Bangia open seat. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Well, <laughs> in, your, in your meeting at the convention, you've gone through a draft of some of the policies that you want to go forward with. There's about 14 key policies yeah. uh, from the economy to land and the resources of this country, how PNC will develop them. The education mm -hmm. is another of uh, PNC's policies, health, law and order, yeah. and infrastructure, linking the rest of the country through road or whatever. Yeah. And of course, political and public service reforms. Yes. Interesting, um, not new ones, are they? They are not new, but these issues are similar issues that every government needs to work on. Yes, yes. Uh, it's not something that uh, we are going to uh, devise and reintro reintroduce a, a new agenda that is going to be uh, able to change overnight how we live in our country and work in our country. Okay. Uh, but these are some of the pressing issues that we have in the country, and I think uh, uh, any government, whether it be PNC-led government or anyone else for that matter, uh, needs to focus on, okay. and, and, and uh, for instance, the economy. Uh, without, I, I want to yeah. get into that uh, <coughs> a little later on in, in sure, your sure. policies, but <coughs> okay, uh, all the policies you, <coughs> I guess you've got uh, political stability <coughs> and uh, polit political reforms <coughs> and public service last down. I want to start off with that, sure. because everything else, I think uh, you have to have political stability and an effective and a working credible public service in order yeah. for the rest to fall in place. Yeah. So. 
uh, how are you how are you going going to move forward with stability in politics and reform mm -hmm. reforming the public service well the last real reforms that were really put forward to to the country was uh, in 1999 and uh, in 2000 by the then Morata government uh, apart from that we have some piecemeal work on done on the provincial government system in the country I think as we approach 50 years of uh, independence in the country, uh, we need to ask ourselves as citizens of this country, as the system of government and the public service structure and the management of the public service is delivered to the expectation of our country, expectation of our people. Uh, these are questions that we need to take to the people during the next term of parliament before we reach uh, 50 years of uh, uh, independence uh, in our country. So I think it's timely and we hope to ensure that some of the reforms that we are going to do will provide more stability, more certainty in, in, in terms of uh, political leadership in the country and, and to give them more certainty about public service machinery being independent of politics. Uh, today we see that the political uh, leadership is interfering and and, 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 and compromising the public service structure. Uh, many of the departmental heads and many of the heads of uh, statutory bodies are uh, becoming like an a, a, a executive officer to the political leadership in the country. Uh, that should not be the case. Whether political leadership changes or not, public service missionaries should have the continuity of providing basic services to our people and to our country. So that, that is the agenda that uh, I'm really focusing on, on putting to the nation as soon as uh, we have an opportunity to form government. Okay. Well, but the yeah, second issue is uh, more importantly is about when you hear issues like referendum and autonomy in Bougainville and uh, some of the, uh, the New Guinea Island provinces who are bringing autonomy out, we need to find a way to accommodate these wishes of the people. And, okay. and, and it is important. Uh, whether uh, the Bougainville issue, is it within the constitutional framework of our country or not? Does it follow our laws? Uh, should another issue like Bougainville arise anywhere else in the country, are we going to have the similar uh, sort of uh, approach to the approach we have done in Bougainville? I, I think the country needs to, I think we are now in a situation where we can go through either a referendum or political consultation uh, with the people and let the people decide uh, some of the some of the reforms that we will be suggesting as government. Okay, uh, just <coughs> on public servants, mm. do you think the public servants are feeling that they are being alienated, they are being pushed aside, mm. and <coughs> the politicians are going direct to the people and want to be involved with the issues and resources and money direct with the people and leave the public? Are they feeling mm. that they're being Sidelined. Uh, they have been definitely intimidated, more so in the last three and a half years. <laughs> they have been threatened. Threatened. <laughs> not before that, eh? <laughs> uh, definitely not before that. You will see that uh, you will find that many of the public servants who were heading departments and so forth, they had consistency. They had, they finished their contracts in on many occasions. Many of them finished their contracts. Some of them renewed for the second term. That brought about consistency and stability in the departments. So you can f you can feel the uh, feel the respect that there was between political leadership and the demarcation of the roles. Okay. Right now they have been compromised, pushed, intimidated, and uh, and all they do is they fear for their jobs. So th they are not able to tell the uh, uh, political leadership that they are wrong, okay. that this is uh, not according to law. You should not be uh, uh, doing it this way. They lose we their advise jobs it. otherwise. Uh, uh, precisely. Yes, yes. And what we need to do is we need to establish, re-establish the independence of the uh, public service structure in the country. One of uh, <coughs> a former prime minister, mm. and you're a former prime minister. Mm. One of them said, "Politicians are becoming checkbook leaders uh, and pushing the the normal public service that are supposed to be the implementers of policy aside." and they themselves are carrying around checkbooks mm. and trying to become accountants and, and construction managers and all that. I mean, that may be the case uh, in, in some cases, but you know, where some districts and provinces where there is uh, a little bit of uh, order and, and, and respect for rule of law, uh, there is smooth working relationship between political leadership and the public servants. But it is the public servants who are allowing the leaders to intervene 
if they follow the laws and if they follow the rules of the public service structure, they should be said, listen, I'm a Section 32 officer. I am responsible for this uh, checkbook. Uh, you should not be giving me instructions outside your responsibility. But they are too afraid to tell the political leadership. And this is where the breakdown is happening. Whereas political leadership thinks that they can be able to interfere in, in, in that. And of course, when we have an ombudsman system and all the other watchdogs agencies are too weak and weakened, they cannot intervene. Uh, there is nothing else but to compromise, and this is what's happening. Next, on Your Vote Matters. We have a, a, what we call a merit-based appointment process, but again, that has been uh, really severely compromised.